Hello, hello, hello. This is Coach McCarthy. We are on 6.4, and we're going to talk about explaining types of investments. I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you now. This video is probably going to be a little bit longer because there's a lot of different types of investments and a decent amount of things to cover. I'm going to try and break your uh, your test down into two days, which might be on a Friday. So we'll see. Um, types of investments. So as always, you can click, click on the Google search and it'll give you a lot. I mean, there's as many types of investments probably as you can think of. A lot of different ones, different types, different ways to go about it. Um, so feel free to, to look through those. We're going to talk about several of these. Um, and let's see. Here's all of theirs. And we're going to talk about retirement options, banks, investment funds, stocks, all those kind of things. So we're going to try and knock out some of the easy stuff first, and then we'll, we'll get into a little bit more complicated. Uh, so one of the things that we'll talk about as we're talking about types of investments um, is is one of is being speculative. So speculative is the act of putting money into financial endeavors with a high probability of failure, an investment that carries a high level of risk of loss or the activity of investing in these types of investment. So it's something that is risky and it, it might not go all the way through. We didn't really talk about this when we were talking about savings and investing, but this kind of falls in that in that same in that same genre or same grouping. Um, so you're you're investing basically in the future and you're speculating that something's going to go good. Um, so there is a lot of speculation when we get into finance, and especially with the stock market. You're hoping something's going to turn better, um, and you're hoping that the value is going to go up. So back to our document here, our notes. Uh, the first one that we have is house or real estate. So the goal of this is to own property that increases in value so you can sell it at a profit or receive rental income. So that your house is an investment, right? You want to take care of it and you want to try and keep it good so that you can sell it and make some money off of it, right? And that's kind of the premise of there, there's an ongoing debate about whether you should rent or buy. And if you buy, at least you have something to sell. Maybe you can get, it's an investment. You're, you're trying to sell it later on. Uh, renting, you never have an investment. You're just paying to, to to live there. So that that's a conversation probably for another day. But that is one of the big investments that a lot of people make, and that's probably the most common. So that's, that's why I put it up there at the top. Uh, number two is your car. Your car is an investment. You're going to pay a lot for it, and hopefully it lasts for a long time. Now, you might not be able to sell it and get your money back out of it. You might be able to. Um, maybe it's uh, an antique car or something like that where it's going to do a little bit better. Speaking of, let me let me add that in here. Basically, anything that you can you can purchase that you think is going to go up in value. Um, maybe your car. Maybe you're invest. You're buying a business. You're going to put some money into the business, hoping that it's going to do well. Um, maybe you know someone that's going to open a business, and you give them some money to start for a, an ownership stake. And that's an investment, hoping that it's going to turn back around. Um, number four, collectibles, antiques. Again, anything that you buy that's hoping it's going to go up in value at a later date and time. I mean, that's the simplest way you can say an investment, I think. Something you buy that's going to go up, you're hoping that it goes up in the future. Um, and people collect anything and everything. And antiques is a good one because they do traditionally go up in value. Uh, we, we, we have talked about cryptocurrency briefly. Again, we're not going to get into it because it, I'm not going to lie to you. It's still a little confusing to me. Um, but that is an investment that you can put your money in there, kind of like stocks and CDs and everything else that we're going to talk about. Um, another big investment that you may not realize right now is going to be your retirement. You know, well, hopefully one day you're going to you're going to be done with your work and you're going to get to retire, and you want to have some money to do that on. So that that's a big investment that you're going to make along the way, um, and hopefully you're going to you're going to, it's not too speculative, so hopefully it's not too risky, and hopefully that's not going to fail. Hopefully you are going to retire and be able to pull that money out and enjoy it. Um, the next one we have here, letter letter seven, is a savings account. And that one's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. I think everybody knows what that is. You you put money in the savings account. It may or not pay you interest. A savings account interest ain't going to be very much, one, two percent, if that, or maybe even a, per, a, a percent of a percent. Um, so they don't pay real well, but it is a very safe and secure place to put your money because it's always going to be there. The great thing about a savings account, you can draw money out and put money in at any point in time. And that's probably the the the, the really catching part and, and the great part about a savings account and was we're going to compare to some of these other ones. You put money in, you take money out. All right? It's there. It's, it's not real volatile. It's not going to be changing a whole lot. That one's probably not real speculative because your savings account should always be there. You know, there's no reason why it should ever go anywhere unless you're pulling money out of it. 
All right, so maybe the, the second easiest one on the list we're going to talk about is going to be a CD. So with a CD, we're talking about, a, as, as it says right here, I'll read it to you just in case, a product offered by banks and credit unions that provides an interest rate premium. So your CD rate is going to be higher than your savings account, all right, in exchange for the customer agreeing to leave a lump sum deposit untouched for a predetermined period of time. So this is really the big thing about CDs. You can't take the money out. You might buy a CD for $1,000 and they might give you, you know, 5%. And I'm not sure exactly what the going rates are. We'll talk about those. But it's usually I give you $1,000 for two years. Once you put that in there, you, you can't take the money out. And that's kind of the, the, the drawback of the CD is that once, that once that money's in there, you can't take it out. Now, I say can't. You can take it out, but there's penalties. You're not going to usually you're not going to get your whole investment back unless it stays for the maturity or the length of that CD. Um, so it can be really good. And we're going to check out some rates here. Uh, so here's your here's your best CD rates for February. You can check on those. Uh, so see minimum deposit to open, maybe a little bit higher rate. And there's a, a whole bunch of different ones. So let's kind of check and see if we see any that just jump out. Hopefully these open up for you. Um, so there's 0 0.75, 0 0.7, and these are gonna these are higher than what your savings account is gonna be because it's not even gonna be this high. Um, but you can see one year, two year, two year, uh, one year. Maybe they have some a little bit longer, 15 months. So you're gonna get that money back, and this is the money that you're going to get back. So they can be beneficial if you have money sitting around and you know you're not going to need it for two years or you're not going to need it for a year. But again, if it's money you're going to have to have right now, a CD, got to be careful with those. Let's set it a little bit. Let's do five years. So uh, this is a good one. So this is a six-year CD at 1.05%. So you give them $1,000 and they're going to hold it for six years. You're, you can't touch it. You can't get it back. And this is what you're going to get back after the, the six years is up. So as you can see, the percentage rates are, are going to be a little bit higher. You might be able to make more money. However, you just have to be able to leave it in there for that extended period of time. All right, back to our, our notes section here. Uh, so CD 101, we don't need this one anymore. So this is from the balance. We, we've been pulling from them a lot so far. So CD, a certificate of deposit, investments that, investments that help grow your money safely. And we talk about safe because that money shouldn't be going anywhere. All right. So here's what we here's what we talked about. CDs typically pay higher interest rates than other banks, but there's a catch. You have to leave your money untouched in the account for a specific length of time. All right. For example, a six month CD is meant to be left alone for six months. That's what we talked about. You cannot take it out. Um, CDs are available in various terms. We saw that six months to five years. Um, so as we can see here, some CDs also have an adjustable interest rate. And if you pull your funds out of a CD before it matures, before the specified amount of time passes, you have to pay an early withdrawal penalty. That can vary based on CD. So make sure you understand what that is going to look like. Uh, safe investments because there's, there's not a lot of risk for losing your money. It, it should be good. And here's a good example. You might have plans to buy a new home in two or three years. You're building up a down payment. You won't need to spend the money in the immediate future. So locking it up for a higher interest rate could make sense, right? That's going to let that money grow that you don't need right now. And that's the best way to think of the CD. It's money that you don't need today. Maybe in two years, I'm going to need it. Uh, your money's only safe if it's FDIC insured. So we'll see this a lot. Make sure it's FDIC insured or covered under this other one when you're at a credit union. So I'm not going to lie, this one's new to me. If you're concerned about locking your money up, you might want to consider liquid CDs, which allow you to withdraw some or all of your money before maturity without any penny. Liquid CDs typically start with a lower rate than traditional CDs, but they do offer a little bit more flexibility. I have not seen too many liquid CDs. I know they are out there. It might only be certain banks that offer those. So if that's something you're interested in, talk to your bank and see if they have a CD or a liquid CD, depending on which one you're wanting to go with. Um, investment strategies, we're looking at how long it's going to be in there, all right? How long is your money going to be in there? And then maybe you can start to look at the interest rates you're going to get off of it. All right, some good things to know here if you're going to get with an investment banker. Uh, if you hire somebody, they may use brokered CDs, which are a little different from plain vanilla CDs. That's kind of what we're talking about. So you got to know what's going on, all right? Know what you're getting yourself into as the article continues. In addition to brokered CDs, some investment managers offer CDs that are linked to the stock market. Those instruments are extremely complicated, which means we're not going to talk about them. They might be hard to get out of, and they might not work the way you expect. 
All right, so understand what's going on with your CD. And again, we talked about this. Understand what your investment is, what you're doing. All right, back to our document here. The last one we have, this is a link to Capital One. So what's CD and how does it work? I'm not going to play the video for you. I, I do suggest you watch it. It's pretty good talking about what the CD is and kind of how it works. Um, so we talked about, not compact disc, but certificate of deposit. An uh, account that allows you to save money typically at a fixed interest rate. That's what we talked about. You're going to put it in there and you're going to leave it in there. Um, usually higher than those offered by a traditional savings account. That's what we talked about before. And that's the benefit of putting the money in the CD. You're going to get a little bit higher rate. And you're going to be able to get more money. So some things to take away here. The big side of CDs is predictability. The fixed rate and specific term, you know exactly what you're going to get. You know exactly when you're going to get it. Uh, the main drawback of CD is the flexibility. All right. And like savings account, you can't withdraw the money whenever you want. That's what we talked about. And, and like it says, at least without paying a penalty, most of them are going to charge you a penalty for taking your money out. So in conclusion, CD, good investment. All right. But yes, stay in there. All right, that's the main thing you got to watch out for is that maturity. How long does it have to be in there before I can access my money? And if you do try and pull your money out early, you're going to get hit with a penalty. And that's the big advantage of the savings account that you can pull the money whenever. Uh, CD, nope, got to stay in there. All right, continuing, uh, talking about stocks. Uh, stock is another way that you can invest. And there's, there's two different ones that we'll focus on. We have common stock, which is a unit of ownership of a company that entitles the owner to voting privileges. So you get to vote and you get money back in what's called dividends. And then we also have preferred stock, which is a type of stock that gives the owner the advantage of receiving cash dividends before common stockholders receive them. And sometimes you can get some other little perks and benefits. And those are usually company or stock specific. So stocks are attractive as investment because owners share in the success of the company. There are a lot and that's what this one is. There's a lot of different stock exchanges. Um, the main ones that you probably know of is going to be the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange, and the NASDAQ. Um, and those are the, the, the biggest ones that we really know of. Um, there's the Japan, London, Shanghai, and as you can see, eh, there's a whole, whole bunch of different stock exchanges. Okay, so all these different countries have theirs. Um, so it can be in a lot of different places. It's not just the, the New York Stock Exchange, which is what most of us really think of. Um, so here we go. So stock market 101. And these will give you a lot of good articles about how to get into it, kind of what it really is. Um, and I marked a couple of them for us. And we might come back to the Investopedia one. We, we like Investopedia. But let's check on something real quick for me. So the, the, the thing to kind of take away, and this is the Investopedia article, um, some of them have minimums to open an account to trade with stock. Um, there are commissions and fees. You got to be careful with those. And some of them can get pretty high. So you see trading fees range on the low end of $2 per trade. It can be as high as $10 for some of the brokers. Um, so you're going to have to go through a broker typically to buy a stock. Um, there are some apps now that you can use that have a little bit, little bit cheaper on the fee. Um, but if you're using an app, you're not going to get the advantage of being able to talk to someone like you might get from a broker. So they, they have their ups and their downs um, in different ways that they work. So here's a good thing to take away from Investopedia. Uh, remember, a trade on stocks is in order to purchase or sell shares in a company. If you want to purchase five different stocks at the same time, that is seen as five separate trades and you will get charged for each one. So understand that really. We talked about fees earlier on when we were talking about investing and understanding your financial advisor, especially when if you're going to get into the stock market game, understand what those fees are and what they look like. You don't want to be a situation where you think you're making money and you're not because you're not covering enough to cover all your fees. Okay. So really understand those and what's going on. So we jumped over here to the nerd wallet. And, and again, I like them. They, they're pretty good about the information that we need. So stock market basics, And, and there's going to be a lot of terms, and we'll, we'll try and touch on as many as we can um, to understand what's going on. Uh, NYSE and NASDAQ are open from 930 to 4, and then there, there's no trading after that. So if you buy something at 359 and, and think you're going to be able to get rid of it, understand that there's times when this stuff operates. Okay, uh, and if you need a broker, see our analysis for the best stock brokers for beginners. All right, and again, we like NerdWallet. They're, they're pretty good about information. Um, so here we've, we've talked about... Um, stocks, you're likely to hear most about the S&P 500, the NASDAQ composite, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They are often used as proxies for the performance of the overall market. S&P is the standard and poor 500, 
um, NASDAQ Composite is some of the higher companies in NASDAQ and Dow Jones Industrial Averages. And these are the ones that they're talking about how the market's going to be moving. So you'll hear those terms a decent amount. We're, we're going to talk back about those here in a little bit. And this is kind of something that we've talked about with investing. The goal of stock traders is to capitalize on, oops, sorry. We'll just start here then. To capitalize on short-term market events and sell stocks, stocks for a profit or buy stocks at a low and then turn around and sell them. All right. Uh, some stock traders are day traders, which means they buy and sell several times throughout the day. Others are simply active traders placed in a dozen or more trades per month. So you can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you're not careful. And you can also make a lot of money. Um, and knowing what's going on, a bull market versus a bear. A bear market means stock prices are falling. So be careful with those. All right. When we get into that situation and a bull market normally means we're running forward and going good. So we talk about this S&P 500, which is the standard and poor. Holds around 500 of the largest stocks in the U.S. Has to historically returned an average of around 7% annually. Um, the, the stock market does crash. You got to be careful. It can plunge. It's plunged recently. Um, and there was some, some stocks that went up here recently with GameStop and everything else. We're going to talk about those on some of the other things that we're going to talk about. And diversify. Again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't buy everything of the same stock. Try and buy some different stocks because you don't want to lose all your money. All right, let's come back to our notes here. Um, and this is terms you need to know. 37 stock trading terms every trader needs to know. Uh, I'm not real sure who this guy is. I looked for this earlier. There were some good ones on here, and some of them we're going to stop and, and, and talk about. Um, you, and you can watch this video. It's, it's pretty good. So we've talked about what the stock market is. You're buying equity. You're buying a stake in a company. You don't need your notifications. Uh, you're getting, you know, a, a, a share. You're, you're buying part of that company. Um, and we've talked about what it means, so I think we're good there. So our, our basic terms, um, in any report, a report prepared by a company that's intended to impress shareholders, it talks about the money that they're making and how they're doing. Um, arbitrage refers to buying and selling the same security on different markets and at different price points. Um, so we're not going to get into this one whole, a whole lot. We talked about bear market a little bit. Um, averaging down, you can read through some of these. We won't touch on these a whole lot. Uh, so blue chip stocks, the stocks behind large industry leading companies. Blue chip stocks offer a stable record of significant dividend payments and have a reputation of sound fiscal management. So these are going to be probably, in theory, your best companies and the best ones to invest in. So this is a good term to know. I don't really know this term. I haven't heard it very much, but stock market term is a little murky. I don't know that one. Uh, bull market. This is in New York. This is the bull outside of the New York Stock, stock Exchange in New York. I, I've actually seen him. Um, so it was when it's going good. Broker, a person who buys or sells an investment for you in exchange for a fee, which is normally the commission. The bid is the amount of money a trader is willing to pay per share for a given stock. It's balanced against the ask price, which is what a seller wants per share of that same stock. So the ask price is what they're looking for. The bid is what you're willing to pay. Uh, and the spread is the difference between those two prices. Um, close is when the New York stock, they both close at 4 p.m. That's that's done. Uh, after hours trading can you to 8 p.m. So I didn't know this, but there are some after hours trading. Uh, the close simply refers to the time at which a stock exchange closes to trading. We talked about day trading. Uh, dividend, that's the money you're going to get back from the company. So a portion of a company's earnings that is paid to shareholders or people that own a company stock. Um, exchange is where we're buying it. Execute, when an order to buy or sell has been completed, the trader has executed the transaction. Um, I, I don't know, haircut, extremely thin spread between them. Nah, not too much that we're going to talk about. Uh, high, which is going to be its highest price. Okay, Index, a benchmark that is used as a reference. Um, so the index is kind of that number where it's been. All right. Um, this one, the IPO, the initial public offering, is the first sale or offering of a stock by a company to the public. So this is when they, they first come out um, owned by a private or inside investors. So this right here, the SEC, not the Southeastern Conference for you athletic fans, the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is who oversees a lot of what goes on with stocks and some other stuff and some of the other things we're going to be talking about. So this is a big company. And you need to know who these folks are and what they do. All right, so we're going to talk about something. So leverage, uh, and this is this guy saying he's not a fan of leverage. Uh, when you use leverage, you borrow shares in the stock 
from a broker with the goal of increasing your profit. If you borrow shares and sell them at a higher price point, you return the shares and keep the difference. A very dangerous game that I urge you to avoid playing. So basically, you're speculating, then it's going to go up. I'm going to buy them at 30. If it goes up to 35, I'm selling them and I'm making $5. I'm never actually buying them for 30. It's kind of weird how the, the money and, and all those zeros work, but I'm able to make some money. Now, if it drops down to 25, you got to buy it at 30. So you're going to lose money. So that's why you got to be careful with those. Um, and we'll talk about what happened with GameStop and all that with Robinhood. And it's kind of what they were, what they were working with, um, with speculating and leverage and those kind of things. Uh, the low is the lowest point that it's been. Usually it's a 52 week low, which is going to be your, your, your yearly low. Uh, margin account lets a person borrow money, take out a loan essentially from a broker to purchase an investment. The difference between the amount of the loan and the price of the security is called the margin. Trading on margin can be dangerous because if you're wrong about the direction in which the stock will go, you can lose significant cash. You must often maintain a minimum balance in a margin account. Again, you're speculating that something's going to go up. I'm going to buy it on margin or buy it low at 30 and it's going to go to 35. Um, so you got to be careful with that. Um, Moving average is just the average of where it's been. Usually it's a 50 and 20 day moving average, kind of where that's been. Uh, open is when the stock exchange starts. So order an investor's bid to buy or sell a certain amount of stock or option contracts constitutes an order. You have to put an order in to buy or sell 100 shares of stocks, for instance. So your order is what you're actually going to be, what you want to purchase. Um, and these pink sheet stocks and penny stocks uh, traded at $5 per share or less. They are also called over-the-counter stocks because that's how they are traded. You won't find them on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange or any other major exchange, and they're often smaller companies. Now, you can make a lot of money with penny stocks. You get yourself in trouble, too, with penny stocks because if it goes up, you can make a lot of money because typically you can buy a lot of them because they're not very often. Uh, your portfolio is everything that you you own, and that's not necessarily to stocks. That's just everything in general. Um, the rally is when you have a rapid increase when it's going up. Uh, a sector is a group, all right? Uh, like technology is a sector, medical is a sector. Um, share market, any market which shares of a particular company are bought and sold, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, short selling. Okay, this is this one's a little bit more. Uh, when you short sell a stock, you borrow shares from your broker with the promise to return them later. When you sell the borrowed stock, the money goes into your account, but you owe the shares to the broker. It's a way to take advantage of a stock that you believe will decrease in price. After you sell short, the goal is to buy back the shares at a lower price, taking the difference in price as your profit. If you buy to cover at a higher price, you take a loss. There's also a fee to borrow shares. Uh, so this guy says he used to short sell on a regular basis. It can be very risky. Again, you're, you're, you're banking on whether a stock's going to go up or down. And this gets a lot of people in trouble because they, they think they understand what's going on in stocks. But it's, it's really a, a weird, weird thing. You, you can make some money and you can lose real, real, real quick. Um, spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price of a stock. Uh, for instance, if a trader is willing to trade XYZ stock for $10, Buyers willing only willing to pay nine dollars for it. There's a one dollar spread, so there's a difference in there. The stock symbol normally it's three letters. It can be four characters, and that's how you can look them up. So we talk about that things are volatile, that they're moving around a lot, and volume. Typically, we're we're buying a lot of things. Um, yield often refers to the measure of the return on an investment. So uh, if you bought stock for forty dollars per share and it pays a one dollar per year dividend, you have a yield of 2.5%, all right? So, and again, there's a lot of terms with the stock market. And again, you can get in trouble. Just be careful with what you're doing. If you want to get into the stock market, really research it. And we come back to our financial advisors, you know, uh, understand their cost for using them, how those trades are going to work out, reputable, your risk tolerance, all right? Just make sure you vet them out. I think we're going to take a pause for the cause here on stocks, and we will come back and pick this up on 6.4 letter B.